All right, so let's move on to creating a tool that allows us to scatter a bunch of these guys uh, around uh, some sort of terrain or any surface really uh, inside of Unity. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize the Houdini engine to give me this power because what I can do is I can I can create an HDA here inside of Houdini and import it into Unity and it'll work just like if I had actually programmed my own tool inside of C Sharp or something. Okay, so it's really, really powerful, which is why I wanted to show, you know, this complete process from creating, you know, a grass blade texture to creating a clump to scattering it to exporting it and now finally to actually scattering a bunch of these onto a surface. So let's go and create uh, some sort of geometry node here. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this uh, just a, I'm going to call this something really simple. So let's just call this our IP uh, terrain. Let's actually spell that correctly. We'll call that terrain uh, generator, something like that. All right. And what I'm going to do is uh, right click on it right away. And I'm going to create an HDA out of this. Okay. Or a Houdini digital asset. And... I'm going to adjust these names because this is going to be the label that you see when you create this. All right. And we're going to destroy all spare parameters. All right. So what we get is the edit operator type properties window. And this allows us to basically interact with all of our uh, HDA properties, if you will. So we can go and create our own custom user interface. So for instance, you can see that our current uh, geometry node you know, has these tabs up here. For its properties well I don't want to see those so I can go in here in the parameters tab here right I can go in here and I can select all these guys and I can say uh, invisible and there we go and that actually wipes out the the UI and we can go in and and add our own UI so if I just drag and drop any UI element from this side and into this side and hit apply you can see now I have a float value all right and I can use this float value to feed into my actual uh, terrain. So what we're going to do is I'm going to call this the uh, terrain size for the name and then terrain size for the label. And this basically is going to be within a range. So I want a minimum size of 10 and maybe something like 100. All right, we're going to try to make a pretty large little grass field here. And I'll set this to something like 30 by default. All right, so I'm going to hit apply and accept there for now. Now there's so much more uh, to know about uh, creating HDAs and it's kind of out of the scope of this particular uh, course, this little mini course. Um, I do have plans to make a more of a mega course, if you will. Uh, it'll walk you through, you know, beginning to end on everything you need to know about uh, Houdini and Houdini engine with Unity. Uh, but for now, I would just follow along with the steps here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into that geometry node there and I'm going to create a grid. All right. Here's this grid right here. Awesome. All right, so what I want to do is I want to attach, you know, the slider that we created up here to the size of that grid. So I'm going to right click on it, say copy parameter, jump into my terrain generator and just paste that in for the X and Y size here. Cool. All right, we also have control over the resolution of this particular piece of geometry. Okay. And so what I want to do is I want to actually tie, I just want to use one slider to change the resolution because I want to keep all the, the polygons perfectly square. So I'm just going to right click on rows here, say copy parameter and then paste relative reference. So now all I have to do is just, you know, slide one slider and I get resolution and every single polygon or primitive here is uh, the same size. All right, cool. So let's actually promote this parameter up to the top of our HDA. So I'm going to right click on this and say type properties. I'm going to jump back in now to the node and I'm going to hold down alt and middle mouse click and that will then promote that to the uh, parameters our type properties up here. Okay, so I'm going to apply and accept that and now you'll see that we can uh, control our rows, our resolution here. So if I hit W on the keyboard, I can go into wireframe mode. That allows us to control the resolution from the top here. We can also control the size all at the same time. So cool stuff. All right, so I'm going to disable the display of my skylight there and hit W on the keyboard so I can get back to the non wireframe mode there. Okay, so let's go back into our terrain generator. And what I want to do is just give this some basic noise. So I'm going to say 
Got mountain for a little bit of noise. What this will do is it'll allow me to create, you know, kind of a little grassy knoll, if you will, with, you know, some nice little undulations in the terrain and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm going to do something like that and maybe a little bit bigger, maybe switch over the noise to a sparse convolution here. Um, and then increase the height a little bit more. This way we get some mounds and stuff like that. It'll look, it'll look cool inside of Unity. All right. Cool. So I think that's going to be good for a default right there. All right. And then uh, one last thing I, I really want to do here is I want to be able to colorize this by uh, its current height values. And so I'm going to drop down an attribute wrangle node here. And what I'm going to do is call this my colors like so. All right, and so what I need to do is I need to find the minimum and maximum size. So if I were to go to the side view here, the front view, I need to find the distance, you know, from our maximum point down to our minimum point, and then basically create a gradient between all the points, Y heights here inside of this grid. All right, and so to do that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create two vectors. So I'm going to call this box min and box max. Okay. And then I'm going to pass that into a get BB box function. We're going to get the bounding box information from the first input or input zero right there. And then I'm going to pass that into uh, box min and box max, right? like so. Cool. All right. And so then with that, we now have the information about the minimum and the maximum Y of this particular grid. And so what I can do is I can actually create a ramp value. All right. So I can say, uh, float gradient, all right, is equal to our fit, and we want to fit our at p dot y between our box min dot y and our box max uh, dot y, and we want to fit that between zero and one. So wherever it's, you know, at its minimum, we'll, we'll get black, and wherever it's at its maximum, we'll get white. Okay, so we can verify that now if we pass that gradient value into our color, like so. Voila, pretty cool. Okay, so then with that, we can now override the color. So actually, I should just leave that there. But this time, I want to utilize a ramp. So I'm going to create a new ramp here, and I'm going to call this our colors, and I'm going to pass in that gradient value for our 0 to 1 value. Okay, and so what we need to do is hit this little spare parameter button, and this allows us now to control the color. But you'll notice that this particular ramp right here is just a single float value. I need to actually turn this into a color ramp. All right, so to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go hit this little gear up here and then select Edit Parameter Interface. And inside of here, what I want to do is I want to select my ramp value. You can see it's currently set to float type. So what I want to do is I want to set it to a color type. So with that, all we need to do is hit Apply and Accept. And now we can control the colors because I want to give the top kind of a a grassy look and then maybe as it gets down into the lower areas it becomes a little bit more dark like a, a dirt maybe more dirt is exposed there or something like that we can clamp it up a little bit not gonna be pretty good I think cool all right so with that we are good to go so I should put a null node I should also say this is not necessary but I like to do this because it's a lot easier to find these particular nodes when you're doing a lot of object merging. Okay, so I'm going to say out um, terrain. And we'll capitalize it too. Cool. All right, so now we got that all set up. And one last thing we need to do here before we test this out in Unity is, pr is to promote our ramp up to our HDA. So I'm just going to open up my terrain generator, select the attribute wrangle that's handling all of our colors, and hold down Alt and then middle mouse click. And that'll put our ramp or our color ramp into our HDA properties. All right, so now we're good to go. So you can see now we can control our train size and our resolution and our colors from the top of our HDA there. Excellent. Very cool. So I'm going to right click on this and say save node type. And I'm going to jump over into Unity here because what I want to do now is test this out in here. And that this is only possible because I do have the Houdini engine installed. And I'm currently using uh, Houdini 17 and Houdini engine version 3.2.
All right, so you need to have at least an indie license for this to work too. Okay, so let's go into our Houdini engine tips and we have our HDA uh, folder here. And what I want to do is I want to open this up. I actually want to open up this folder. So I want to right click on this and say show and explore. There we go. And then I want to go to my documents folder. I'm going to go into my Houdini 17 folder and that's where my OTL is going to be or my HDA, I should say. And so I'm looking for the IP terrain generator. There we go. Cool. Okay, so now we have it inside of our Unity project. So let's just drag and drop that into the scene. All right, so there we go. So now we have a pretty large uh, terrain here. You can see that our grass clump is actually pretty tiny compared to that. Uh, and that's probably because uh, when we go and export things out of Houdini, we need to basically multiply it by 100 here. There we go. There we go. That's a little bit better. I think it's a little bit better uh, look at what this is going to turn out to be like. So we have our terrain generator now, and we can go and we can change the size, we can change the resolution, you know, it's whatever you want. Go and change these colors. It came in a little dark here. Uh, change that spacing. So you have full control over all these particular elements here. So let's do this. And just kind of brighten it up a little bit. There we go. That'll be cool. All right, so uh, now that we've got that, let's uh, move on to getting our particular uh, grass clump scattered uh, onto the surface here. Okay, thanks so much.